That's awesome. Like a lot of times I'm here, but I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yes, Sam. We don't write stories on the Didn't think about it. I guess the first question I should ask is what kind of pizza do people want from when you say? Pineapple. I will give you a pineapple. There is one Tuesday as well. We're having one in here on Wednesday. Old apartments tomorrow. This class is done. Pineapple, pepperoni, green pepper and onion. No. Yeah. No. Uh, it's green pepper and mushroom, not onion. No. I know it's mushroom, I don't know why I said onion. Sausage, sausage, pepperoni, mushroom. It sounds like four at this point. <laughs> you can do half cheese, half pineapple, or like half pepperoni, half pineapple. Yeah, you can do half pepperoni. I think the easiest one to do would be the split the meats in half, so half pepperoni, half sausage. Yes. Okay. I do have an 11 a.m. on Wednesday. You have 11 a.m. on Wednesday. How are you going to get the pizza then? I have a 10-minute break between my 11 a.m. and this class. Or I could order his pizza, I suppose, and deliver it. Yeah, All right. You? Okay. We don't have anything from that one time to the other time. From that one time to the other time? Wait, is that tomorrow? No, that's Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. All right. Sam, do you have a question? Can we ask questions about the test? Sure. I'll do you my question tomorrow. I very much appreciate that. Number 10. Or we want to run the test. Oh, he has a question about number 10. Well, I asked questions about the whole test, and you said no, we're not going to do that. I don't want to do the whole test. You don't need to ask questions about the whole test. Well, we did it on the last test, and I didn't even know the last test, so we did it then. Okay, so what about 10? So were we only supposed to do the... This year I, I calculated it for um, like buying all the bonds and then we wrote 1500 instead. So were you only supposed to do 1500 over 1575 of the bond or just the whole bond? You were just, you're supposed to find the cost of the first bond, the yeah. one, right. So it would be 1500 over 1575, right? Well, it would be 1500 minus the fraction of the coupon payment you had for the second bond minus the fraction for the coupon for the, the first bond. So you would need, what, 1000 over 1070 of the first one? Yeah. And then on this one you had, I remember, you had 2000 minus... A thousand over ten seventy times seventy over twenty one twenty, and then that was times one twenty, and then it would be over the fifteen seventy five. I would still need to multiply that by the fifteen hundred to find the cost of the bond. Oh, that's how much of the bond that you need. If you got five. I'm so close. That's good. For then for number nine, how come we weren't supposed to use the Macaulay approximation to modify the The standard is that you use the modified approximation unless I tell you it's Macaulay. I definitely did Macaulay first. I was like, that's not an answer. Like, yep. Nine. I memorized the formula. I didn't remember the formula. That was my problem. Did you get most of the credit? Yes. yes. Yeah. There you go. I just saw this But if you do that on the net, if you do that on the exam, that you won't get any credit because you have to select the right answer. I'm glad that somebody asked about that before I came back. So I'm probably going to have to. Really, using like the 10 questions in there probably might not be possible. The cut score is usually around 25 out of 35. 25 out of 35. Someone asked for contrast. We're not taking three guys. Good. 
Still that I can hear. Any other questions? Um, I'm going to say number one, but I don't know. So I had all the way up until the balance at time 12, and then I messed up the what n was. So it's how much can I go? It's because uh, yours was, in the, I think, if I remember correctly, you weren't the only one who did it, but the end doesn't stay the same after it's been refinanced. So you don't want to use the end to try to calculate something. So um, I think the easiest way to do it, I think you find that your balance after the 12th payment is 18764-ish. No, I'm reading somebody else's test. <laughs> All right. So... This is what you would want to use then. So you'll use this for your present value. And then your payment. Hey, how are you? Yep. I mean, what kind of pizza do you want on Wednesday? I'm, I'll order a pizza for class. What kind of pizza do you like? Anything? Okay. You like pineapple? Because that's what Haley likes. Yes? Oh, she Oh my gosh, all right. That is an unpopular opinion. It's great. Probably the easiest way to do it would be to compute and keep your future value at zero and compute the n. If you're going to do it in your calculator, you have to compute something to get the amortization table to work correctly. Right? So. Do it this way. Put the present value, the payment, the interest rate, compute the end, and then go to the amortization and uh, do 12 more payments. Okay. You could have also done it. I, I posted an answer key, too. You could have also done it as um, you would do your 18,764 times 1.035 to the 12th. That's the 12th payment, right? And then subtract off the uh, accumulated value. Of the 12 payments that you would have made and do it that way. This is what I did on the answer key. That's the pro that's the retrospective method, right? Yeah. If you try to use the same n as was in the previous thing, it's going to throw you off. Yeah. When it's refinanced, the, the n changes, unfortunately. Why do I only that's because it's easy to do. I didn't get a 10 on the exam when I took it. It's easy to do. I'm sure I can. I mean, mistakes on that. I suppose it doesn't matter as long. It doesn't matter as long as that. Yeah. Yeah. I had nine on both P and F. So if you only get one question right and everyone else gets zero, you pass. No, they said a cut score is usually around the 65% of each area. Yeah, the Which cut score. crazy because that's not good when it has. They have all the most choice, so. That's what makes it fit. That's a D, that's a passing grade. Yeah. So the cut score is usually, so if you have to be at somewhere between 19 and 21, typically. And for F, I'm between 24 and 25, right? I'm 35. So if I took it right now, just, do you think that would matter? Like I, like I said, if you got everything that's right that you know how to do, yes, I think you would pass. We've covered it up here, but we didn't pass it so it's done. It's safe. On the exam, are they going to have questions about things you didn't cover in the book, like the U.S. and Canadian Treasury loans? It, it's, it's certainly possible. Is that one you just guessed and move on? That's one that I would just read over before the exam and then I would guess and move on, yes. So, you said the final thing wasn't actually for that. Mm -hmm. Are you going to, like, make sure that we know how to do everything on the practice test? Yes. That's cool. That's kind of important. So, I have a question. Yes. No, no, that's allowed. 
Am I talking to you? Just say your question. You don't have to mention anyone. Um, so if we already know most of what is going to be on the exam, mm -hmm. what are you You're going to, well, one thing I would suggest that you, well, I'm going to get practice. Either you can buy them a practice manual, review manual, or I'll buy one and put it in the apartment. And you can use it there. And then you're, I'm going to buy one regardless and put it in the apartment. You don't have to buy one. That's what I'm telling you. This is what I'm saying. Okay. Work through review problems. Ask questions if you come across them. About, I would say, probably a month out, get a description of 30 inquiries. And you practice on there, and you've got questions to ask. When did you decide to do this? Because that's the It's the same part of the exam, and FL on the same page. No, they have different times of the year that they have, they have them. He is on Monday nights. And then when you get higher up, they don't offer them as often. <laughs> yeah. Taking the fifth extra exam in the second three years. All right, so let's talk about spot rates and forward rates. So here's the idea behind this stuff. So let's just look at the first problem on those uh, the sheets that I gave you. This is the first homework exercise out of 16, chapter 16. Did I not write that No, I just gave you this packet. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if you, because sometimes I miss it. You bring it no, I didn't. Oh, I didn't. All right. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. So... <laughs> Did you lose it? How'd you lose it? No, well, Grace, well, Grace is good at finding things in of hers that aren't hers. It's really weird. It's probably something in my office all the time. All right. So it tells you that you've got a coup an annual coupon bond maturing in three years, and it's telling you what the annual effective spot rates are at one year, in two years, and three years. And it asks you to find the price of the bond. So we're going to actually find two things. We're going to find the price of the bond and the annual yield of the bond, which we're not given here. But we are given spot rates. So the idea behind the spot rates is pretty, it's actually a pretty simple idea. So if you were just going to price this bond based on the information they gave you, what rate do you think you would use for the first coupon payment? 5% because that's the one year spot rate, right? So what that means is that if you've got a, the spot rate, the idea behind it is if you've got an investment that's going to last one year, then you would expect to get a 5% return on that one year investment. A five year annual return on that one year investment, okay? What do you think you would use for the second coupon? 6%. Six. Six and what, so you would take that coupon and divide by what if you're going to find the present value? 1.06 squared, right? That they get back two years, right? The six percent is still quoted to you as an annual rate, so I got to take it. I got to square it to bring it back to two years. Okay. So again, what the spot rate means is that if you had a two-year investment, you would expect to get a six percent return on over that two years, six percent annual return over that two years. And then for the last coupon payment and then the redemption value of the bond. We would use a 7% rate for this one. So if we want the price of the bond using the Sprott rates in this case, you would have what? A $50 coupon that you've got to bring back one year at a 5% rate. You've got a $50 coupon that you've got to bring back two years at a 6% rate. And you've got a $50 coupon plus the redemption value that you've got to bring back three years at a 7% rate. So that's how you use the spot rates in this case. So you're not given an overall yield rate, which we, we could still find it. After we find the price, you can find an overall yield rate. We're not using the yield rate here that we did in the previous step when we were pricing the bond. We're using the spot rates depending upon when those interest, those uh, particular investments come due. Now, the way they figure out those spot rates are based on, if you go through the reading, they're based on usually U.S. Treasury bonds. Based on, they're, they're, they're zero coupon bonds, and they're considered very, very low risk bonds.
bonds. So you've got these interest rates for those uh, zero coupon bonds for one year, for two years, for three years, and those would be those spot rates. And then that's how you can figure out a yield to maturity. Once you have the spot rate, you can figure out the price, and then you can use our methods of finding the interest rate like we've done before. Calculate the overall yield rate for your. Does that make sense? That's the idea. Did anybody get this price while I was sitting there yammering? 949. Is that, that is in yes in Spanish. Well, I mean both, but see, <laughs> see? see the answer. Yeah. See. The answer. see. Yeah. All right. Oh, I see. This is the second question, not the same problem, but yeah, it's the same problem. So now that you have the price, you should be able to figure out the yield. What would I do to figure out the yield? Uh, yes, use the TVM buttons exactly. So this was 16.01 for 16.02. You've got your price was 949 and some decimal. Okay, and you're going to put that where? Okay. Should I make? Well, I would make that one negative. Yep. Then what else goes in? Three goes in. Okay. 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 Oh. This is E. Wow, you did it. You did do it. I found that the answer is very very vague. <laughs> yeah. Be interesting to look at a statistical analysis of the answer choices. That thing would be interesting. Could you statistically see which one you should guess if uh, you didn't know what the answer was? Statistically, I would say if there's five answers, D. D? Because I feel like I choose D. That's just fun to see if it doesn't. Yeah, let's look at. Do I want to do three? I think I want to do three. Yeah. 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 I was looking for ones that I want to see here. Yeah, let's try to do three. Oh, why not? Okay. So it says a bank offers certificates of deposit at the nom nominal annual interest rates below. So as an investor deposits X now and withdraws principal and interest at the end of six years, what's the ma ugh, max maximum annual effective interest rate the investor can earn over the six years? All right, so this is actually a sample exam problem. I've seen this one before because it's a really goofy worded problem. So these are the only possible investments that you can make at this bank. Here, that's it, okay? So you got to figure out what's the best way to invest your money and get the maximum possible yield after six years. So what are some possibilities that you can do with your investments and get the money back out? Actually, actually grab your money at six years and then you're not allowed early withdrawal. So what are some combinations that you could do? One in five. Okay, you can do one in five. You can do two threes. You can do six ones. You can do yeah. yeah. You can do a three ones and a three, right? <laughs> All right. So the ideas, though, are: Do you want? Are you going to want to do six ones? Just based on what the interest rates are, are you going to want to do six ones? No, no, because the interest rate is too small, right? You're only going to get three percent per year at a nominal interest rate compounded quarterly, right? So you're not going to want to do six ones. You're probably not going to use any ones at all, except for maybe maybe combining a one with a five. Right? Probably the only one you're going to be able to do. Because if you, if you do the three ones and a three, it's still going to be less than two threes, right? We agree? So, what we want to do is you want to compute the yield rate. You want to do both of the, want to do both of the scenarios. You want to do the yield rate for two threes. 
three year um, CDs. And you would do the yield rate, certificate of deposit. It's what you put in your player to play music. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what, the CD player? <laughs> Smart Alec. <laughs> Those things existed. I don't think I ever actually saw anybody carry a Bronco with them on their shoulder. What's that? <laughs> That's right. I held it out in front of the window. Hurry, I want to know was uh, playing Aspen. Uh, we were really? looking at that over the second floor we were looking at. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it wouldn't have been that cool. No. <laughs> anyway. All right. So how are we going to figure out the yield rate for these? What are we going to do? Pretty good. What's going to be the one for the two, three-year CDs if it's going to the yield, if the rate's going to stay the same? It's going to be 4%, right? Because you're going to do the 4% and then compound the 4% again, right? Can you agree? So how are we going to figure out what the yield rate is for the, the, the easiest way to think about how this would work would be you would do what? You would take, your rate is going to be, remember your, you have to do what you, whatever you invested, and what's it going to grow to, right? Which would be 1 point, um, in this case, what, 1.01 .01 to the 12th. That would be for three years and then do it again for another three years. Right? We agree? That's how it would work, right? You invest X, it increases by 1% per quarter for 12 quarters, and then that amount will increase by 1% per quarter for 12 quarters. Right? And you want to know what that would be is if you just took X times 1 plus I to the 24th. Right? Or I guess it's an annual effective, so I would need to do this times to the fourth, right? Or not fourth, or the end sixth, so it was six years. Right? Yes. Annual effective rate for six years on that investment has to equal the investment, grow for three years, and then grow for three years. Right? So it would be 4% compounded quarterly, so you, but it's asking for annual effective rate. So this is how you would solve it, right? Notice what we're using here is the idea of these spot rates, except it's going in a reverse direction. This is growing rather than finding present value. What did you get for I when you did that? You didn't? All right. So what would we do then for the other one? Oh, no, that was for the other one. Oh, that was for the other one. I got 0 0.0406. So. <laughs> I got 0 0406. 0406? 4.06. Which notice is one of the answer choices, right? Okay. So how would we get the other one that Nick got? How do we figure out this yield rate for the one year CD and the one, five year CD? X equals one plus I to the six equals X times one point oh one to the fourth times X plus one point oh five to the fourth. One point oh one oh one to the twentieth. Okay, point one one oh one one to the twentieth, okay. There we go. Okay. To the fourth. Good. Okay. I just didn't hear what you said. All right. So this is the one year CD, right? So the seven, the point zero zero seven five is the point oh three divided by four, right? For one year. 
And then this is the 4.4% or the 0.044 divided by 4, so 0.011. This is five years in 2040. So that that growth has to oops, I my hat. that growth has to be the same as if I had the annual effective one plus the annual effective raised to the sixth. And if you go through that, you should get 4.23 percent. And certainly combining the ones with a three isn't going to make it any better than that, right? Or the ones with itself. So those are the two cases that you would have to worry about. Does that make sense? Are we okay with that? Let's, yeah, you're just taking the biggest one. Yeah. Is a 4.23. Yeah. All right. Let's look at the this is the terminology here is odd. Which is why I want to look at this. So let's skip the next one. Let's go on to the 16.05. We okay with the spot rate idea? Make those happen? Okay. So for the most part. So now we're gonna talk about forward rates. What's wrong? Oh. <laughs> That's very um <laughs> it happens. That's fine. All right, so uh, let's look at 16.05. You've got zero per, uh, zero coupon bonds. I almost said zero percent bonds. That'd be really useful investments. <laughs> Might as well stuff it under your mattress. All right. So zero coupon bonds are quoted at 7.5% for one year, 8.5% for two year, and 9.25% for three years. So those are your spot rates that you're given. Your one-year spot rate, your two-year spot rate, your three-year spot rate. Okay. Again, what that means is that if you've got an investment that's going to come due in one year, you would expect that first in, that first interest rate to be the return. If you've got an investment that comes due in two years, you would expect the second interest rate to be your return rate, and so on and so on. That's what the spot rates mean. When you're doing a yield rate, it's kind of doing that weighted average idea over the entire time. So the annual effective yield means the spot rate. Because there's zero coupon bonds, so it's the same. When you've got zero coupon bonds, the entire investment comes back comes at that time. So the yield rate and the spot rate are the same for zero coupon bonds. They change if you've got coupons, right? Because not all your investment comes back at the end. It comes in over time. Okay? All right, so in this case, you've got spot rates which are the same as the yield rates for those particular bonds. You've got spot rates of seven and a half, eight and a half, and nine and a quarter. This is let I be the one year forward rate starting in one year. So forward rates have a starting time and then how long they last. Okay. So they start at time T and then they can last for N years or N time period. So in this case, it says, what's the one year forward rate starting in one year? Okay. So what that means is that you want the interest rate from time one to time two. That's what that forward rate is. Okay. So based on these spot rates, that's what we're going to find. Okay. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So we want, just for this one, we want the interest rate that's implied from time one to time two. That's what a forward rate is. All right, so we already have a rate for how something needs to grow from time zero to time one. And we have a rate for something that's supposed to grow from time zero to time two. Those are the spot rates, right? How they're supposed to grow. We're given the spot rates in this case. Okay. So, as far as the notation goes, from time zero to time one, we should have the growth factor. I'll go write it that way. The growth factor should be 
1 plus whatever that first spot rate is. I'll call S1 to be your first spot rate. From time 0 to time 2, what should the growth factor be? What would you multiply an investment by to figure out what the growth rate, what the growth would be from time zero to time two? What would you multiply the investment by? One plus two. Okay, yeah, good. You do the one plus the two year spot rate, and then I would square it, right? Does those make sense? And this just that's how you would do it in general for any of these spot rates, right? The growth rate would be the growth rate would growth factor would be the n year spot rate plus one raised to the nth power. We agree? Okay. All right. We're looking for what the implied forward rate is from time one to time two. The one year forward rate starting at time one. Okay. When it says one year forward rate, that means a one year rate, a one year duration starting at time one tells you when you want to start it. So go from time one to time two. Most forward rates that you're going to compute are one year rates. Who wants the forward year forward rate for one year? Just in general, but it could be for any time period. Okay, so these are this is this is a way to get from time zero to time one. This is one way to get from uh, time zero to time two, right? What's another way to get from zero to time two? From time zero to time two, what else could we do? We could go from zero to one and then from one to two. The from one to two is what we want, right? So to go from time zero to time one and then to time two, our growth factor will be what? What do you, how do you think we would do that? If I want to go from zero to one and then from one to two, what do you think the growth factor would be in that case? Yeah, you go from 0 to 1 first, which would be your 1 plus S1, right? And then I would need to multiply that by whatever the forward rate is, which I'll call F1 in this case. The actual notation for the forward rate is basically it's two subscripts. There's a double subscript. The first one is when it starts. The second one is how long it goes for. If you don't have the second subscript, you assume it goes for one year. Okay. So, it would look like a one comma one. Yeah, yeah you usually put a comma in there. Because you wouldn't know if it meant a one and one or eleven, because then you left the one off. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Is it okay. All right. So. If we want the implied forward rate from the spot rates, what do you think, what equation do you think we should solve? Well, here we got two ways to get to time two, right? So what equation do you think we should solve? Yeah, let's set them equal to each other. I take the one plus S1 times one plus F1 and set it equal to one plus S2 squared. And do I have enough information to get F1? I do. What is S2 in this case? Okay. And then square, right? And then, okay. So that gives us an F1 of what? It has an answer. It's very exciting. Chance is right, yes. Well, that's the idea here. Does it make sense? Um, I don't know. Confuse you. All right. Shame on you, Grace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You see an Animal House? Remember the Animal House? Oh. There's a scene where he says, you screwed up, you trusted us. 
Go. I've seen it once. He, they, they borrow the guy. They borrow the one uh, pledges car and just absolutely destroy the thing. Yeah. And they're screwed up. They, they say screwed up. You screwed up. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got just random crap flying around. Okay, that's what we do. You don't know about these movies you have seen. It is one of the movies I have seen. I've seen that one. Except oh, you don't like movies? You see, I don't see movies. You see, you see, so I love movies. How much did you see, like 10 in the past like, 10 years? Yeah, because I don't want very many movies. That means you miss all the horror movies. Did you just I didn't miss them. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, I tried a little hard that hand. Give me in my hands. I tried a little hard that hand. Yeah. All right. And it was a little low. It was a little low. I mean, catchable, yes. Yeah, it was very catchable. I'll take a glance of that. As is. Oh, it's so All right. Good. Let's play. All right. Let's do the next one. Let's do eleven or sixteen oh six here. Sixteen point oh six. This was a little bit different. They've given you the. So mean to me all the time. <laughs> She's going to me again. I'm sure you meant like things are like bouncing off of each other, like kind of like our Roomba program. But like what I pictured was like a swings ride and it was going really fast and things were flying, flying off. off. <laughs> That's probably more accurate. It's got Calliope music playing in the background too. It's not a low hum. What's the difference between two? For two years. Was it? It means it's one year rate, but it starts in two years. It's, yes, that's right. Yeah, it's going to start at time two and go to time three. Ooh, smart. Okay. Voices start coming to life. <laughs> yes. So, what do you think we need to do here? Well, let's do our assignment. Okay. Yep. You might. Let's do the zero to three first, actually. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. okay. One plus zero point eight five zero. Except those, those aren't rates that are given to you. Those are prices. Those are prices. Oh. Now we got to find one. Plop, plop. <laughs> one plus I three to the three equals zero point eight five zero. Okay. Three plus zero point eight five zero equals zero point eight five zero. So how would, we, how would we figure out? That's the price of a, what is it? It's a price. Right, say it is a percentage, isn't it? Well, the bond is one. Yeah, the bond is one. So it's saved in this percentage, essentially. How do you figure out the price? These are zero coupon bonds. How would you figure out the price? It would just be. So the price is the coupon. No, there is no coupon. There is no coupon. It would just be the redemption value backwards. Yeah, it's just a redemption value backwards, right? There you go. So what? what is what does that point zero eight five represent? Yeah, which is one in this case, right? So it's one times Okay. One plus I'll say S three cubed. Right? Because that that is the present value is the price, right? That's how we would find it, isn't it? For zero coupon bonds, yield rate, or the rate used to price it, is the same as the spot rate. Because there are no coupons. It is a three-year investment. So the spot rate and the yield rate are exactly the same. Okay? So we got a way if, if I to get a, a price of a one-year bond is 85 cents, then I must have taken the three-year spot rate, added one to it, and divided by the cube. So you know what 1 plus S3 cubed has to be. So 1 plus S3 cubed is uh, 1 over 0 0.85. 0, 0 0.85, I said that right. Okay. Can I figure out what 1 plus S squared is? Or what S2 squared is? Good. Because that's how I would get the two-year spot rate, right? I would take the price of the two-year bond and move it back two years, and I just rearrange the equation. Right? Okay. 
So if I want to find the, the one year forward rate deferred for two years, or F2, what's that going to equal? Just as a formula, how would I find it? This is the two year for the one year forward, two years deferred rate. This is just a guess. Here. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's really it. Why is that? Okay, so let's think about it again. What does S two give you? How, what does S two give you? Just generally, just it's the spot rate. Or two or a two year rate. Yeah. So it gets you from zero to two, right? What does S three give you? Zero to three. Zero three. What does one plus S two squared times one plus F two give you? It goes from zero to two and then two to three. Right? So if I divide by the one plus S two squared, that's how we get this. Oh, so you just have the equation. I just said it and I divided it, yep. So I'm gonna In general, when you're doing the one year forward rate, this is always n plus one, this is always n. That's one plus s n plus one to the n plus one over one plus s n to the n. Well, good. 8.2 is deep. 8.2%? So, what others got? Cool. You need to hustle, Grace. I am slapping it. <laughs> I'm still trying to understand how you got an S2 bed. How we got this one? Is that what you're asking me, how I got S2? Mm -hmm. The one I circled? Yeah. Okay. What does it say the price of the two-year bond is? <laughs> so you would do 0. 0.92 is equal to 1 over 1 plus S2 squared. And I just rearrange the equation. To solve, to solve for the 1 plus S2 squared. I only solve so you for... you really don't even need the S2 itself? No, absolutely not. That's why I just left it like that. I don't actually need S3 and S2. Okay. I just need 1 plus S3 cubed and 1 plus S2 squared. That's, That's where why I was I like, I was like, I don't see your S2 squared. It doesn't. You don't have to worry about it. Not that I could have mathematically found it. But you could have found it. Yeah, I could have. And then you would just redone the work, re undone what you did? <laughs> Which I'm famous for doing. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Pardon me. So if you were looking at 16.07. Wait, what was that answer? Sorry. 8.2. We were looking at 16.07. In this one, they actually give you the spot rates. So which, which forward rate are we looking for? From five, From five to six. Good. So I want one plus F5 will equal what in terms of the spot rates? Good. And what is F6 in this case? And S5 is good. So you get 1.095 to the sixth over 1.09 to the fifth. Okay. Okay, let's look at 16.09 real quick. I know I got three minutes. We're flying. I know. I like this stuff. It's not bad, is it? <laughs> Be nice, wouldn't it? 16.09. Tell me what you're looking for in 16. Before you, I know it says calculate X, so don't tell me X is what you're looking for. <laughs> it says you got. In three years, you're going to loan two, uh, loan an amount for two years. So what are you looking for here? So we need spot rates for what? Three years. Three and 
four, pi, right? Because I'm looking for a two-year forward rate in this case, deferred for three years, right? At time three, you're going to make a loan for two years, and everything's going to get paid back at the end of two years, right? Yeah, say that one hundred is three five or three seven. Oh, it's three plus two. It's three plus two is five. It's safe. It's the interest rates increment levelly uh, on an arithmetic scale or an industry scale of the forward rates between any two times the same. It would have to be the same ratio, so it'd have to be geometric. Arithmetic wouldn't do it. It would have to be geometric based on how you're calculating them. All right. So what would the for if I want so the notation for this would be I want the forward rate, the two year forward rate starting at time three. That would uh sorry, not a two. This would be a five. Starting at time three, ending at time five. So this would be the two and I know even though it has a five in here. The two-year forward rate deferred for three years. It's always the difference between those two is the number of year rates that you're looking for. All right, so I want the two-year rate. I could find a two-year rate pretty quickly, right? What would I need to do if I want the two-year rate? Okay. Okay. Now notice that this is going to give you a two-year rate, not an annual rate, right? It's fine that we're getting a two-year rate here because I can take the two-year rate times a thousand and get what I'm going to have to pay back. Right? But just, I'm just saying, be careful to ask for an annual effective when you're looking at a two-year rate. You'll have to convert it to an annual effective, right? I'm going to ask a really stupid question that I should know how to do. Mm -hmm. So, like, if this is a two year rate, so it's a two year rate, so like your energy one over two. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it doesn't, you don't have to convert this one. I'm just saying, if you were asked to convert it to an annual rate, you would have to because what you're going to get here is a two year rate. Is RB the same rate? So, what do you get? 22%? Okay, well, 22.1 is a good number. Because what do we need to multiply that by? What are we borrowing? Yeah. We're multiplying, yeah, so if I multiply that by, by 1,000, what do you get? You did 1221, right? <laughs> I would I need to multiply that by one point two two one, right? Yeah. Did I gotta do one plus that right? Oh stupid. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone else is that you divide it by two or you can do the one plus I squared? You do one plus I squared equals that, so you separate the, the square root and the right one. Is that right? Wait, what? Yeah, see how you would convert it to the if I was looking for annual effective off of that, you would do 1 plus i squared equals that 1 plus f35. And then, so you take the square root and then write 1. Okay. All right. Can I so, show you, when in our 10 minutes that we're not here, can I show you what I would do and you can tell